with a startup called Samsara, and their tagline is that they are the infinite recycling startup. Okay, ambitious. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a boisterous claim. So let's see if they can stand up to it. It's a spin out from researchers at Australian National University. Interesting. And they're focused all about recycling plastics, um, specifically focusing first on polyethylene, which is what's in you know plastic drinking water bottles. Right. So let's take a step back and talk about recycling as a whole. And it's a little bit depressing, honestly, when you think, when you look into it. So, you know, you just finish using your re- disposable plastic water bottle, you throw it in the recycle bin and it great. You've done your job, right? It's going to get recycled. Wonderful, happy story, unicorns and rainbows and happiness. Do, do you know where that sentiment came from of like, you can just recycle any plastic bottle you want? No. It, it, uh, God. NPR's Planet Money did an episode on this a while ago, I think over like a year ago, where they walk you through, it's like the most insane story you've ever heard, but it starts off with these uh, plastic companies, these, these huge organizations that were like, how can we get people to buy plastics and not feel bad about it? So then they just started putting the the triangle recycle label on everything, on every plastic product. And then these plastic recycling plants that were made to handle you know, one or two plastic types that were cleaned out and taken care of started getting loads and loads of plastics that they couldn't do anything with. And it was just trash. So the little bit of good that they were even able to do way back in the day that all got diminished because some corporations just wanted to make money by pushing their plastic products and having people not feel bad about it. Yeah. So let's, let's take that note and run back to our story with throwing the plastic bottle in the recycle bin. Over 90% of recycled plastic, you know, recycled, you put it in the recycle bin. Over 90% of that ends up not getting recycled. It ends up buried in a landfill. Jesus. It's different depending on which country you live in, but that's the average around the world. 90 to 91% of recycled plastic ends up in a landfill anyway. Um, the other amount of it that doesn't end up in a landfill, most of that is burned for fuel. Um, Germany is one of the best recycling countries in the world. They recycle over 60% of their plastic waste and still the majority of their recycled plastic is actually just burned as fuel. Do they, do they like clean the toxic fumes that come out of the burning process at least? I think they do their best to clean the fumes that come out, but still, you know, when you think you're putting your bottle on the recycling, the image that at least I think of is this is going to be turned into something new. This is going to be used again. Only 1.35% of plastics that are put in a recycle bin actually get turned into new consumer products. Wow. And it's limited. I mean, we just talked about it with Patagonia. Mostly those applications are limited to textiles and clothing and stuff because you weaken the plastic when you recycle it. The recycling process right now uses heat and mechanical stress to break down the polymer chains and turn it into a new plastic. But in that process, it makes the material a lot weaker. So even recycled materials usually are mixed in with virgin plastic, so brand new plastic from fossil fuels, mm-hmm. um, to, so that it's strong enough for any type of end case usage. Um, so pretty depressing. And basically more, you could say. more of this plastic isn't recycled because there's no economic incentive, right? It costs a lot to do. It doesn't end up working out that well, the mechanical strength. And you've usually got to mix in virgin plastic anyway so why recycle and that's why only 1.35 percent of plastic ends up getting recycled that is enter sam sarah okay they're trying to change the game remember infinite recycling startup they have found a process that uses enzymes to digest the plastic focused again mostly on polyethylene they digest the plastic rather than shredding it and melting it which makes the polyethylene product that they get at the end a lot stronger than when it's mechanically and thermally recycled. Okay, so I I had read something about enzymes that they found like by accident in the oceans a couple years ago that that did something similar. But I think the issue back then was the rate at which they ate away at the plastic. Is that that an issue that um, Sensera is dealing with or no? It it is to a point. And we're going to dive into that a little bit but remember what i said about the economic incentives really being the driver for everything here yep sam sarah their goal is to never have to create plastic from virgin materials again okay so the quality of the plastic that they get from their enzymatic process you know using the enzymes to break down the plastic they say the mechanical properties of that plastic are almost if not equally as good as virgin material so economically it makes more sense even though there's maybe a limited rate on how much they can recycle 
it makes sense to use that material because even though the cost is higher and the rate might be limited, it's just as good, if not better, than the materials that you're getting from fossil Interesting. fuels. Interesting. So that's a little bit different from other forms of recycling where the you know the strength of the plastic is weakened. Even if there's a high rate of recycling, you can't really use it for much. So what is the secret sauce that makes this possible? Because like if, if you're burning it, um, what is that? Like technically a chemical change. And if you're mechanically tearing it apart, that's a mechanical change. So how is the enzyme breaking down the plastic where you have no degradation of these core properties? Well, here's the interesting thing. So when you uh, shred plastic or when you heat it up to melt it, you end up introducing a lot of stress to the material and it breaks down a lot of the, you know, plastics are just polymer chains. So it mm -hmm. breaks down the polymer chains. I mean, basically imagine a plastic water bottle, but when you zoom in and on it under a microscope, it's got a bunch of cracks all over it. The uh, digestion process that Sam Sarah uses is actually a lot more gentle to the plastic. So it, it uh, handles it without being quite as rough to it and huh. it induces less stress. So the end material is a lot stronger. And the reason it all works, this is an interesting tidbit for me, is the bonds that hold polyethylene together, remember they're focusing mostly on polyethylene, they are very chemically similar to the ones that hold together carbohydrates. So that's how they can call it digestion. The same way that your stomach breaks down carbohydrates is it's very similar to how these enzymes break down polyethylene into plastic strands. That's so interesting. Wow. That was a fun tidbit. Yeah, it, it is interesting. And so their, their hope is to make truly circular plastic. The, okay. the kicker here, they can only work mostly with polyethylene. And like we mentioned earlier, they have a limited rate of production. And the reason they can use polyethylene, remember the chemical structure being very similar to carbohydrates. That's something that they're capitalizing on. But there's still have a lot numbers, for them to focus on. Do you have any numbers on how much they can produce in a given time span, like in a month, in a year right now? I'm not sure of their rate of production, but let's, okay. you know, we talked about Patagonia and Boreo earlier in this episode. So far in their partnership, they've prevented 105 metric tons of fishnets from ending up in the ocean. Well, Sam Sara, they've partnered with a bunch of different people, like we said, Australian National University researchers. They also got a bunch of seed funding from the Australian government. One of their other investors is Woolworths, which is the largest uh, fashion retailer in Australia. So, oh, so it's like the, what, uh, H&M? Yeah, in the United States. It's, it's like H&M in the U.S. or, some, or you know, or ma around the world, basically. Woolworths, huge retailer in Australia. They've recently placed an order with Sam Sarah for 5,000 metric tons of this plastic. Wow. So, you know, about 50 times more than Patagonia and Boreo are handling. Okay, well, that's impressive. That That's good news. That, that's a fat order. Wow. And so their hope here is... You know, as we've been recycling plastics using the mechanical and thermal processes to date, the plastic just gets weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where even if you try your best, you usually end up finding a use for it that, you know, doesn't really replace anything else. It's just, you know, a way of keeping plastic from entering the ocean because it's too weak. It's not strong enough. You can't make a plastic bottle out of it again. You can't make a T-shirt out of it again because it's not weak or it's not strong. It's too weak. Well, Sam Sarah says they can make truly circular plastic, so you can take this shirt that I'm wearing right now and when it has a rip in it, I can send it to Sam Sarah and they recycle it and turn it back into a shirt that's just as strong. And then when that one's done, I send it to Sam Sarah again and they recycle it and turn it back into a shirt again and it doesn't really lose strength. So that's how they call it infinite recycling. Basically saying we don't need to make any more plastic uh, from fossil fuels. We can keep using the plastic that we already have in circulation. Well, on top of that, I know you said right now they're just focusing on polyethylene. But if they, you know, crack the secret sauce for a host of different plastic products and, and the fact that you're not losing, you know, performance as you go through the recycling cycles, you could start working with like the, the automotive sector. You could work with the aerospace sector. You could like extend the applications of recycled plastics at that point to yeah. whatever you want it to be. Right. Well, like I said, the beginning of this t topic is pretty depressing, learning about how much, uh, plastic actually gets turned into new consumer products in less than two percent right but sam sarah's trying to basically crack that open and like you said there's a whole bunch of opportunities once we start really seeing circular plastic 
uh, you know, become ubiquitous. I can't wait to see all the downstream effects that are going to happen because of this. Me too. Even though it started off on a depressing note, it's, I'm glad we're ending on a happier note. And, you know, I, I feel like a lot of times we, we talk about initiatives and efforts that are the first step towards something great. And Samsara seems to have kind of cracked that first step. And now they're on step 1.5 or two with this 5,000 metric ton order, order they got from uh, Woolrich. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people are equipped to do this. There are a couple other startups that are doing similar things. But one thing that I think is really unique about Samsara is the stakeholders they have on board, right? They have the people that invented it from Australian National University. Like you mentioned, they have Woolworths, a huge retailer in Australia. They're also an investor in the company, so they have a very vested interest in it succeeding. But also, their partner is the Australian government, and that's how they're probably going to get access to a lot of the polyethylene that they use because the Australian government is hoping to increase their amount of recycled plastic as well. So they've got all three parties on board I'm excited to see what they do with this. Me too. You're right that they really do have that rock star team of the right type of uh, stakeholders go- going in on this. And they That's all awesome, are man. stakeholders because they all own stakes in the business. So it's a it's an interesting partnership between the three. Absolutely. I love it. 